we want to do is use sports as the greatest metaphor for life. And if we feel, we feel like if we can teach kids how to deal with anxiety, how to deal with pressure, how to deal with failure, how to deal with success through sport, then it in turn it helps them to become better people, right? So like if you're struggling with something, if your kid's struggling with a bully at school or struggling with taking tests because the pressure is just too much, how do you practice that? Like as a, as a, as a father, you, you can go to your, your daughter and your son and say, okay, you know, work your hardest. Um, don't worry about the end result. But those are just words, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Right? They have to physically put themselves, emotionally put themselves in that same situation over and over to really be able to understand how to deal with it. And what we're saying is that sports does that for you. So now through sport, when you practice every day and you're playing these games and you have these emotional challenges, you get used to figuring out how to navigate yourself through which in turn helps you to become a better test taker and vice versa. I think the goal is always to win championships. No matter where you go, that's the goal. And that's his goal, that's Rob's goal, that's Magic's goal, that's Jeannie's goal, Rondo, all the guys, Kuzma, Lonzo, they all want to win championships, man. So that's what they're gunning for. Well, you don't need to win a champion. Well, you're asking me, we have to win championships. This is why we play. This is why we're here is to mm -hmm. win championships. And, you know, he wouldn't have came here if he, if he didn't expect to win championships. Also, well, it's, to me, it's just really simple. Wherever you play, the object is to win championships. That's it. End of story. End of story. Never. Here's the thing is for us athletes, it's really hard to transition from that. Right. And I was really personal about it when I wrote Dear Basketball. But that is the true challenge of finding what comes next and finding something that you love to do every bit as much as you love your first passion. That is a challenge for us. And I think, unfortunately for us athletes, we've been pigeonholed into thinking that we can only be one thing. And so when I retired, everybody is saying, OK, he's too competitive. He's not going to know what to do with himself. He's going to have to come back. I took that as a personal challenge of them thinking I'm this one dimensional person. That all I know is how to dribble a ball, shoot the ball and play basketball and compete at that level. And so I took that as a personal challenge. I will never come back to the game ever. I'm here to show people that we can do much more than that. And creating this business, winning an Oscar, winning the Emmy and the Annie, those are things that are showing other athletes that come after. No, no, there's more to this thing. Right? So I would never, it's not even a, You know, the, the, challenge, the challenge became, how do I take the lessons that I learned through the game of basketball and translate them into building the studio, right? What are the things that I can take from that? The discipline, um, the commitment, uh, the team and community. How do you get the best out of each other? How do I take those lessons and move those here? Um, that is the challenge. How do we do great work, uncompromising great work? You're not looking at the bottom line. You're focused on the product first. Right? Is this the best thing that we can possibly make, no matter what? And having that sharp focus is something that I got from the game of basketball. You know, I'll sit and I'll think and I'll create. You know, I, I write them all out. Um, and uh, create the characters, create the rules, the structure. Um, and, and then you kind of got to go with your gut. You got to go with your gut and see, are we creating something that's been done before? Or is this a project, something that nobody's seen before? Mm -hmm. And uh, is it a project that we're not sure that we can do? And if the answer is yes, then nine times out of 10, we're going for that one, right? Because that means we're pushing boundaries a little bit. I love creating. I love creating, I love directing, I love producing. I don't love acting. I don't love being in front of the camera. I like trying to figure out if the arc of the story is the right one. <laughs> There's about a 0% chance that I come back and play. So not even like a? Nothing. Zero. You're toast. 
you're finished. Done. As a player. That's it. Did last year at any point with you going through your first season not yeah. playing basketball? Never. Not once did you Never. think about it. I was miserable in my Just life. Just like you. I didn't like waking up. I ain't have no purpose. I ain't know what I was supposed to be doing. On October 8th, 1985, I walked in a comedy club for the first time. Signed up for the following week. The following week, a girl took me down there. She said, you got to go to comedy club. You're the funniest person I've ever met. I never even heard of comedy clubs. I'm 27. I walked in the comedy club. I signed up for the following week. I'm going to sit here and learn. I knew I was funny. I just ain't know what to do with it. They had 10 acts go up. Nine of them went up. I didn't laugh at one joke. I was just sitting there just, man, my wish that was me. Man, they should have said this. Every joke they told, I knew the punchline before they said it, and I wrote a better punchline in my mind what they should have said. It got to guy number 10, they called his name. He wasn't there. They said, well, he's not here. We're going to go to next week's list. Steve Harvey, where are you? Long story short, I won amateur night that night. I won $50. It was meant to be. It was a 45-minute drive to my house with this girl named Gladys. I cried 45 minutes. She said, what you crying for? It ain't but $50. I said, no, no, you don't even understand. I, I was born tonight. I now know what I'm supposed to do. I went to work the next day, October 9th, and quit my job. With $50, I had nothing. I just never gave up. I'm gonna tell you something. That decision cost me everything I had. Everything. I, I lost everything. I lost my family. I lost friends. I lost everything. I became homeless. I lived in a car for three years. But I just saw this, I saw this, I saw this vision. I just pursued it. I said, wow, that's it. You have to take chances in life. Life is about risk. If you play it safe in life, you ain't gonna have much of a life. If you play it safe, you won't have much of a life. Life is risk. It takes it take courage to pursue your dream. Now it's gonna cost you something. Most people are not willing to pay what it costs to go after your dream, cause you're gonna have to hurt a little bit. And most people don't like being uncomfortable. If you don't want to be uncomfortable, please do not pursue success because success is a very uncomfortable feeling. And I just learned to be, I learned to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Life is hard. See, for every time you have a plan, a dream, an aspiration or a goal, do you know what happens every time you have one of those? This thing comes along called life. It happens to everybody. Life has disappointments. It's got peaks and valleys. You're going to lose somebody you care about one day. That's a valley. Somebody going to close the plant you thought was going to stay open so you could retire. That's a valley. Somebody going to fire you for an unjust cause. That's a valley. The people that got your credit card going to sell their company, going to sell their business to another credit card company. Your 18% go up to 26%. You don't even know why now your minimum didn't change because you had because it's life. You can stop thinking that life fitting to be easy because I got news for you. It ain't. That's a false hope to think you're going to have a, a, a wonderfully carefree life. That's unthinkable. We all live in this bubble. What you got to do, you got to put more air in your bubble. You got to blow your bubble up. Expand yourself. Take yourself out your comfort zone. Do not live in your bubble. Put some more air in your bubble. If you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you will fail. You will fail in your comfort zone. Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. Start putting some pressure on. Put some pressure on yourself. Get out here and get about it. Look, I'd love to sugarcoat this thing for you. I'd love to tell you, look, you can go out here and get rich, do a couple of things, that ain't, that ain't happen. You got to get real doggish. You got to get downright funky if you want to make it. 
Now, like I was telling you before, if you want to be ordinary, you ain't even got to listen to me. Just go on about your business. If you think ordinary is cool, ain't no problem. It's some really, really wonderful ordinary people. But if you are sitting in this room and you have extraordinary aspirations, then you're going to have to do extra. You put extra on top of ordinary and you come up with extraordinary. It's no other way. I'm sorry, but here's the fact. All of you have extraordinary capabilities, all of you.